What highly illegal thing took place at your school, viewers edition? Why is there always illegal stuff happening in schools? Well, if it's gonna happen, we might as well hear your stories that you left in the comments. So, let's get going. Story 1. I was in high school just over 20 years ago. One, there was a group of kids that would stand behind the high school and smoke cigarettes, and the vice principal knew this and turned a blind eye to it. He was eventually arrested for domestic violence and fired. Two, I wasn't a part of this group, I was in the cigarette group instead, but there was a lot of alcohol drinking that would occur. Also, intercourse, which I did not partake in either. We had a number of pregnant students. In fact, my graduating year, our valedictorian had a child. Three, so many damn bomb threats. Usually we got evacuated to the parking lot where we goofed off for hours. One time when arriving in school, there was a metal detector and everyone had to walk through it to enter, and they were also checking pockets and book bags. Several students threw their condoms on the ground before approaching the entrance. Four, during another bomb or something threat, the principal came into the intercom and announced that all boys were to leave their backpacks behind where they were at and immediately go to the gym. Girls were to stay where they were at and then the teacher in each classroom proceeded to go through every single backpack while the girls watched and cooperated and had their own backpacks gone through too, of course. The only thing that was found in my class was a guy who had a Mountain Dew bottle that had nasty liquid in it. It dawned on me later that it was his spit bottle for chewing tobacco. Five, many years after I graduated, there was a guy I went to school with who became the resource officer, or whatever they're called, the police officer for the school. He held some kid in a chokehold and another kid videoed it and it made international news. Six, a girl in my class had an internet boyfriend. This was back when the internet was still sort of a new thing. Pretty sure this happened in 11th grade. She decided one day she's gonna go meet this internet boyfriend, and he lives several states away. So she's driving there, and her car breaks down, and then she hitchhikes with a trucker. Somehow she made it to her internet boyfriend's house safely. His mom answered the door and then calls the police on her, and that was the end of that. If I recall correctly, she was grounded until we graduated the next academic year. 7. Not so much illegal, but kinda cruel, there was this guy in my class that wasn't too bright. Some kids decided to play a joke on him and they recorded some mean and spooky crap on a cassette tape and then placed the thing up in the ceiling tiles in the journalism darkroom. The kid got seriously freaked out as he had no idea where the sounds and the voices were coming from. 8. That reminds me, I dated a guy in high school. His mom had schizo or bipolar or something, whatever it was. She had a fairly severe case of it, and she was also a substitute teacher. When a school official would come over the intercom system, she would get so freaked out and didn't understand where the voice was coming from. The students had to explain it to her numerous times. 9. I almost forgot about this one. In my geometry class, we had a teacher that was super ditzy, and she had left the room, and these kids started fighting. One of them pushed the other into the wall, and it left this huge hole in the wall. So they moved a poster that was on the wall over the hole. Problem solved. The teacher had no idea for like a week, and I think she finally found out because someone told her. 10. Our speech-slash-drama teacher got into some trouble for drinking with students and former students, still underage though, down by the river. I later worked with one of these students, and his mom worked at a lawyer's office, and he thought he was all slick as he got out of jail in enough time to go to work the next day. However, the incident was printed up in the newspaper that day, and of course, his mom read it. 11. Oof, how did I almost forget this one? We had a science teacher that was also a radio DJ. I never had him, but my best friend had him, and he didn't work there long. Much less than two years, and that's being generous. He was highly inappropriate with female students, and he had told one of them he bought something for her and he wanted to see her wear it. She started crying and went to the principal, and in turn, about half a dozen other students then went to the principal with their stories. I didn't even think there was a formal investigation. He got flat out fired the same day, if I recall correctly. 12. Everyone cheated off me in a history class, which I didn't really understand as I thought history was super easy, but it was also a huge interest of mine. 13. Not illegal, but fun. In the band, I was not in the marching band due to a medical problem, and I was in the concert band instead of the symphonic band. So it was important to show up only about half the time. A few other students had the same circumstances, so we would sit in my car and listen to Britney Spears and other pop music during that class. 
14. Our quiz bowl advisor damaged a bus while we were on a quiz bowl competition trip. 15. On an art class trip, the bus broke down about 15 minutes from our destination and we were stranded at a crappy gas station all day and proceeded to smoke cigarettes. There were college kids on this trip too and everyone was smoking and nobody cared. Anyway, some of those aren't illegal, but rather me reminiscing slash feeling nostalgic. Thank you in advance if you read all that. Well, you're very welcome, because obviously I did read all of that. Also, apparently we're very much the same age if you were in high school 20 years ago, so yeah, I can relate to some of this, especially the internet not really being a thing and people having internet boyfriends being a really trippy thing. But also, there was a lot going on at your school. I feel like there might have been that amount of stuff going on at my school, but I sure don't remember, and it definitely has nothing to do with the amount of something that I smoke. Shut up. Story 2. I didn't learn about this until years later, but it turns out my school principal was embezzling funds from the school starting from what everyone I'm still in contact with and I were there worked out to be our last, second last for some, year of school. Another thing that was probably illegal was the year after I left, they turned a classroom the size of a standard classroom in my country into a game room, and a storage room about half the size of a small office was made into a classroom. The students' numbers stayed the same, and if anything like paperwork had to leave the classroom, the teacher would have to pass it to someone in front and proceed to pass it back until the person received it, or a student would take it to the destination. If anyone needed to leave the room, the people in the back row had to stand up, take everything, including their desks and chairs, and stand out in the hall or sit on the floor until the student came back. Eventually, the students refused to do any work until they got an appropriately sized classroom or a smaller class. When the parents realized their kids weren't lying, they brought it up with the school board and the games room was gone, which upset the students who used it, but they were told by students who got the new slash old classroom that if every one of them can complete all their work, make it to the next class on time, and avoid all arguments, then they'll go back to the way things were before. A lot of students wanted to try it, but some backed out when they realized it had to be a whole class size. Some more backed out when they saw the actual room. Some more backed out when they figured, why do I need to go in there? Plenty of people are willing to do it. I wonder why no one took the challenge. Story 3. Content warning R. To skip this story, scroll to the timestamp on screen now. My school is marked by the police as a drug dealing spot. Police constantly check out the school and patrol it daily. It was always like that. I didn't really believe it, but there were lots of suspicious exchanges between some staff and students. One day our school got swatted and they caught a bunch of students and staff for dealing with. The suspicious exchanges still continued. Recently, there was a renovation at the school, and the builders found a bunch of nose candy, oregano, stuff from Breaking Bad, pills, acid, and snow hidden throughout the school. Even though I graduated, they still called me to interrogate. A bunch of fights caused serious injuries, paralyzed some kids, and even killed some. But the kid was deemed missing. Students say that the principal at the time bribed the cops so the school's reputation wouldn't be ruined. A guy kidnapped a teacher and arred her, demanding good grades. The teacher ran off with a junior. A sophomore ran over a junior for bullying him. A senior got a teacher pregnant. A girl hung herself in the bathroom. The teacher had a three-people thing with his students. School doctor touched sophomores inappropriately. Teacher arred a girl. Some kid blew principal's car. Forty kids ganged up on one kid and beat him up. A kid brought a gun to school. Three homeless men found not alive in the gym. The kid shot himself accidentally. Class set on fire. The teacher got beat by his students. Some dude shot bunch of kids on the schoolyard. Yeah, I don't even know how my school still exists. This is the kind of stuff that really breaks my heart. Clearly, this is a school in need. It needs funding. It needs social workers and people to help take care of it. It doesn't need SWAT teams and police just hovering over it knowing what's going on in there. I feel awful for the kids going to this school because how can you even focus on learning and making friends and connections when you're worried about the amount of stuff that's happening there? I don't know how you fix a school like that, but something really needs to be done because these are kids' lives that we're talking about. Story 4. Content Warning. Child Molestation. 
To skip this story, scroll to the time code on screen now. Not high school, but the principal of my elementary school molested boys who came to his office. Shoulder rubbing, they say on his lap, etc. I know some of the boys he did it to. They recently testified against him. I highly respect them now because it must have been really hard for them, but they did what was right. The most sickening part of this was the kids he did it to didn't understand it was wrong until an organization came to our school informing kids about grooming. Absolutely sickening. Story 5. My history teacher worked at a school in Long Island for kids that were kicked out of public school. They would either have really bad behavior or a really bad learning disabilities. Many things happened at the school, but the worst was when a kid got stabbed in the neck with a screwdriver. It didn't hit any arteries, so he survived luckily, but I doubt he went back to school for the rest of the year. He was also unintentionally punched in the face. Basically, a kid kept antagonizing another kid and his friends and kept going at him. He keeps doing this until the kid can't take it anymore and is ready to throw a punch. My history teacher sees this and immediately sprints to the fight. The punch was already thrown, and he intersects it with his face. If he ends up reading this, sorry for telling the story instead of you. You were always the best teacher. Story 6. Three years ago when I was in fourth grade, the gym teacher, also vice principal, came running with a weird voice into our class almost out of breath in the middle of a lesson. We asked what happened. Her voice sounded like that because she had inhaled too much smoke in her attempt to save any children that were trapped in the boys' toilet that was on fire. Turns out a kid from first grade had lit the whole boys' toilet, not a stall, the whole room, on fire. He never got arrested. We peed in the girls' bathroom for one month while they rebuilt the burnt bathroom. I honestly don't know how we got away with something like that. Also, I do not think it is illegal, but I will say it anyway. Two to three weeks ago, someone threw three lemons into the computer class. I was in there. The lemons came in from the window next to me. They almost hit a kid in the face. That would be illegal, but thankfully wasn't. I meant that thankfully the kid didn't get hit. A friend who was in another class told me that the same thing had also happened to them the other day. It's been almost a month now, and it hasn't happened again, so hopefully I won't get a lemon to the head. I mean, I guess if the lemons were thrown with the intent to harm, that would probably be illegal? I don't know laws very well, so I can't say for sure, but that feels like attempted assault with a lemon. Uh, do you know who I am? I'm the guy who's gonna smack you in the face with a lemon. Story 7. Oh man, I got lots of stories from my high school. I'm so glad I can share them. One, this one I personally witnessed my second week of my freshman year, a guy and his girlfriends got into a huge fight, not sure what about, missed that part, and she threatened to have her friends come shoot him, so he picked her up and threw her down a three-story stairwell. Not down the stairs, down the literal stairwell. Two, a girl I was previously friends with in elementary was caught with three pounds of nose candy in her backpack, got arrested, and never came back. Three, two guys brought guns to school and posted pictures of them on Snapchat in their laps in class. When lunch came around and they found the two guys, they pulled out the guns and started running through the cafeteria. The teachers screamed at us to run. They caught the boys about an hour later hiding in the woods. 4. I just found this out last year, but my high school football team had to forfeit all of their wins for two seasons because the principal used fraudulent documents and money from other programs to enroll students specifically eligible for the varsity team. He was supposed to get fired, but instead gave him a promotion to the school board. You know, I hate to say it because I want to think better of the education system, but sometimes it feels like school boards and principals are just as bad as corrupt executives from businesses. They can get away with so much awful crap, and even when they're fired, they're still given stuff that, you know, the rest of us would be thrilled to get, and that's supposed to be a punishment for them. I hate this kind of stuff, and I just, I wish these people would face actual consequences. Story 8. At the high school in my town, there's a huge vaping slash weed problem. The school's been trying to get it under control for years, but has had little success. One day, a bunch of senior boys set fire to all the paper towel dispensers in the bathrooms, and there was a massive fire. The culprits went on the run, but were caught at the block party. Story 9. Talking about the goggle one, it puts me in memory of my day studying chemistry at uni. Our teacher in basic organic synthesis once told us that when we enter a lab, we can disregard all protective equipment except the goggles. Then proceeded to grab his eyeball and pull it out of the socket. 
Now doing synthesis, I still put the goggles on before entering the lab, not wearing a coat nor gloves most of the time. You can burn your skin to the bone and it will probably heal just fine. You can inhale some crap and maybe lose a few years of your life, but all it takes is one splash into your face and you are done for the rest of your life. That's it for this life. Most of the corrosives you use blind in a fraction of a second. Forget about washing them and it ends well. <laughs> so, to add something a little more lighthearted, this reminds me of something from when I was, uh, I want to say probably about 12 years old, 13 years old. I was uh, out in the backyard with one of my friends. We had this huge backyard with like broken down forts and stuff. It was me, my best friend, and my little brother, who was uh, probably like eight at the time. And we had this big old axe and we were like swinging it around, chopping up this fort, bits of wood and crap just flying everywhere. The axe way too close to my little brother. And all of a sudden from the house about, you know, 150, 200 feet away, I hear my stepdad just go, hey, stop that. We freeze up and we march into the house ready to get, you know, just chewed out. And we get there, and my stepdad looks at us, and he goes, Next time, wear safety glasses. And walks away. <laughs> and for decades, my best friend and I would constantly just, if we were doing something stupid, look at each other and go, Wear safety glasses. But I do, and it has protected my eyes in multiple occasions. So, yeah, folks, wear safety glasses. Story 10. This happened in my middle school. I only heard it from a friend, so I don't know if the facts are entirely straight. So there were these two kids who wanted to escape school. For some reason, one of them decided to kick the door instead of opening it. Because the door was made of glass, his foot went right through it. He ended up shattering the whole door and needed to be taken to the ER. Blood was everywhere. Even when you walked by that door for the rest of the year, there was dried blood still on the door frame. He was then expelled. Story 11. One of the school principals at my secondary stole money from the school fund. It got so bad her house got raided. That thing where valuable possessions get taken away from her by law enforcement. And it made national news headlines. To make matters worse, the school in question was a special needs high school. We all kind of suspected something like that must have gone down, joked about the things happening, and made the best out of it. Story 12. I don't know why, but my friend next to me told me this happened in the dude's bathroom. So there was a door in the class where it led to two bathrooms with one stall, a boy and a girl's. So in the boy's bathroom, and to say this is not illegal, but it is very treacherous, including that you can get in very, very big trouble for this. After the book fair, a lot of people had invisible ink markers, and so someone had wrote about that someone in our class sucked, and something else that had bad words, but I don't know what bad words. And someone saw it slightly on the wall somehow and decided to be a snitch. They told the teacher, and the teacher had to get the vice principal to the boys' bathroom to get invisible ink UV light. Turn the lights off and see what they wrote. And he had to call mostly every single boy in class and ask them questions, and at some point, the dude who did it framed it on another kid who wasn't involved in any of it and got suspended for a day. I mean, that might actually be illegal. I know you said it's not, it's just very treacherous, but that is kind of vandalism. Granted, it's with, like, invisible ink that you can only see with UV lights and stuff, but I think that still counts as vandalism, so... Probably illegal, I think. Once again, I'm not great with laws. Remembering or following them. Story 13. Now, I have quite the story. It all started one day in math class. It was June, so the windows were open, and lucky me, I had a window seat in the front corner. I was just dozing and heard an explosion in the distance. It sounded not too far, but given how loud it was, it must have been pretty small. I then see someone running from the direction of the explosion to the school building and think not much of it. Also for context, there's a parquet near my school and my window faces it. Later on in the day, final period, a few minutes before everyone goes home, there's an announcement saying something along the lines of, Students, please remember fireworks count as explosive devices and as such, don't bring them to school. I made the connection that the small explosion near the school I heard earlier was the fireworks and thought nothing more of it. Time skip, about a week ago, my best friend walked to his locker after we finished our lunch. 
On the way, we see the principal and someone else I don't remember outside the second floor boy's bathroom. It's rare to see them not walking somewhere and judging by their feelings something had happened. Turns out someone had set off a firework in the bathroom. Fizzler type, not explosive. Me and my friend continued walking and I recall the rumor I heard of a fizzler being set off in the cafeteria. I don't go to the cafeteria and rarely, if ever, walk by it so I wouldn't know. And I semi-jokingly said, the next one's gonna be in a classroom. My best friend said something along the lines of, watch what you say, and I hope not. Time skip, about another week, I was sitting in that same math class playing games, today was effectively a review, then I heard something that sounded kind of like rushing water from the back of the class. I turned and once people started screaming, I elaborated that it was a firework someone threw into the classroom. Thankfully it was a fizzler, so nobody died. If it was even the smallest explosive, one, at least four people would have died in it. Once it fizzled out, the teacher called the head office and accepted that nobody was going to learn anything after almost possibly dying, so he put on tiny food videos for the rest of the class and let us do what we wanted. At the moment, it was pretty terrifying. Even though I was about the safest location in the room relative to the firework, that still made me realize how easy it would be for someone to just throw an explosive into the room. I can't imagine what it was like for the people at the back of the room right next to the firework. The student who threw it was eventually caught and to my knowledge at least suspended, possibly expelled. At least in the end, I got to brag to my best friend about correctly predicting this a week in advance, although I wasn't expecting it to be my classroom. I am very glad to hear that no one got hurt. Um. You may not know this about me, I'm not a huge fan of fireworks because I have seen people lose property because of fires that those have started. And as much as people might think, oh, it's just a little firework, no one's really going to get hurt, you throw that into a school classroom and, you know, that could set off a bunch of books or papers and start a fire that people couldn't get away from. And worst case scenario, you throw it into a science room with like Bunsen burners and stuff and cause some real damage. So I know fireworks can be fun if used appropriately, but they are not a good thing to be using for jokes, folks. People get seriously hurt. I have friends who are missing digits and worse because of that stuff, so be careful. Story 14. I had a friend in high school who got sent to juvie sophomore year and came back her senior year on house arrest. She and her boyfriend, who was 23 at the time, went to her younger friend's house, who was 14 at the time, to hang out and do drugs together. All three of them wanted to leave at one point, but the younger friend's mom wasn't letting them. My friend hit her over the head with a pan until she was knocked unconscious. Her boyfriend tied her up, and once she woke up, the younger friend proceeded to shank her over ten times. The three finally left and locked her in the house, still tied up. The mom finally got out of it all and ended up jumping out of a two-story window to her freedom. She contacted the police, police caught all three of them, and the mother decided not to press charges on her son, but did press charges on my friend and her boyfriend. Friend got out early on house arrest since she claimed insanity, and the boyfriend is still locked up for predator charges, robbery, assault, etc. I don't really talk to that friend anymore, but she occasionally will text me to check up on me. Story 15. I was almost caught with the whole vial of acid because I was hitting my vape and tried to hide it. I mean, it was the end of the day, I took a pee hit my vapes a couple time, and as soon as I went to walk out, my disciplinary principal walked in and saw me blow out a cloud. To give you a perspective of how effed I was, I've already been caught with two vapes that year and was on school probation, had about six to seven Zans in my sock, and had half a vial of acid in my pocket. I didn't think about my vial in my jean pocket when I put my vape in my shorts, so when he asked me to turn up my pockets, my heart dropped so fast after I felt it. I grabbed the vape out of my shorts so fast and gave it to him and went home. Almost got expelled for the vape alone, so that's pretty funny. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.